This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Today, I'm going to show you a data frame library for Python that is way faster than Pandas. Its name is Polars, and in this video, I'll show you why you should choose Polars over Pandas and how to learn Polars in no time. So let's get started. Okay, first let's see what's Polars and why you should use it. Polars is a library written in Rust and uses Arrow as its foundation. Although Polars is written in Rust, you don't need to know Rust to use it, but there is a Python package that you can use to get started with it. In fact, if you already know Pandas, learning Polars should be easy. Now let's see some of the reasons why you should choose Polars. Polars uses all available cores on your computer. It also optimizes queries to reduce and needed work memory location, it handles datasets larger than your available RAM, and it has a strict schema, so the data types should be known before running the query. And if you go to the Polars documentation, you're going to see a test where you can compare the speed of Polars with other alternatives. For example, here with this data set of 100 million rows, you can see that this is 5 gigabytes and it took Polars only 43 seconds, while Pandas uh, it took 628 seconds. And well, here you can see different tests with basic questions, advanced questions, and well, more basic questions. And you can see uh, the comparison that the Polar's team made here, and you can go to the documentation for more details. And in case you wonder how Polar's outperform Pandas and other tools, well, this happens because unlike Pandas, Polars is lazy and semi-lazy. In lazy Polars, we can do query optimization on an entire query in order to improve performance and memory pressure. That said, you could do all your work eagerly with Polars as you will do with Pandas. Okay, now let's learn how to use Polars. And something I recommend you is not to memorize the functions we're about to learn, but to learn by doing. And that's something our sponsor, Brilliant.org, can help you with. Brilliant is the best way to learn data science interactively. It has thousands of lessons from foundational and advanced math to data science, with new lessons added monthly. My favorite course on Brilliant is definitely data science. It covers topics like computer science, data structures, and statistics, which is a topic I tend to forget, but with Brilliant I can learn and review these and more topics through problem solving. When you problem solve, you're not just memorizing formulas or equations, but learning how to think. And this is very important when it comes to developing your analytical thinking. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash the coach. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual and premium subscription. Okay, before we start working with Polars, you need to install this library. And to do this, you just have to go to Jupyter Notebooks and write this command on a cell. So I wrote pip install polars with this uh, exclamation mark, and then I run this, and with this we install this library. So once you have this library installed, we have to import it. So here I'm going to write import polars as, and here I'm going to use pl. So this is like the the convention for polars. It's also on the documentation in case you want to check it out. So here I imported polars and we can read files as we do with pandas. And to do this, we only have to use here pl and let's read a CSV file that by the way is on the on the description. I'm going to leave the file in the description below. And to read this CSV file, we have to write read underscore csv just like we will do with pandas and here i have to write the name of the file in this case the name of the file is students performance csv that's the file that we're going to work with and again this file is going to be on the description of this video and here i'm going to read this as df and here i have my first data frame with polars so i run this and then i can show it here and as you can see this looks very similar to pandas, to a pandas data frame, but some of the differences that we can see is that in the column names, we not only have the column names, but we also have the data type. For example, here in my ID column, this is an integer and we see I64, so that's the integer data type. Then in the gender, we see strings and we see here the str data type. So every time we have a data frame, we're going to see the column name and also the data type. That's how 
folders work. And something else you might have noticed is that this data frame doesn't have an index and Polars uh, doesn't work with indexes. In the documentation says that Polars aims to have predictable results and readable queries and they don't think that index help them reach that goal. So that's why they didn't include index in the data frame. And for us, this means that we're not going to work with methods like log or ilog. And also we're not going to get that setting copy warning in Polars. And that's something good because nobody likes getting those warnings. And well, now let's move on and let's see what else we can do with Polars. So first I'm gonna show you how to get the column names. And just like we will do with pandas, we can simply write df.columns and this is the columns attribute and we get all the column names. So just to make, to show you that this is very similar to pandas. But now uh, from this point, we're gonna see some differences. For example, when selecting columns, when we want to select columns in pandas, we have some syntax that is different uh, from polars. For example, let's say we want to select the gender column with polars. So to do this, we have to write df and then use the select function. And then we have to write pl. This pl is the short name for polars and then that and then call. And then we have to write the name of this column. So in this case is gender. And I press enter and with this we get that gender column. And we can also select multiple columns. Let's say we want to select the gender and the math score column. So I'm gonna copy this one so I don't have to write again. And the main difference is that we have to add the square brackets. So here I'm gonna add the square brackets and then we have to write that name of the other column, which is math score as I mentioned before. So I write math score, I run this, and as you can see now we have two columns, gender and math score. And we can also select all the columns as we will do with pandas. And in this case, we have to use um, the asterisk. So this is a symbol that allows us to select all the columns. So I'm going to copy this to avoid writing again. And now we have to write, uh, instead of the name of the column, we have to write the asterisk. And with this, we get all the columns. Okay, now let's see how to create columns with polars. And in this example, let's create a new column named sum. And this sum column is gonna be the sum of the math score and written score. So we have here math score and written score, and we're gonna sum it to create a new column. And just a refresher, in case you are a pandas user, you do this in pandas by just summing the columns as I'm showing you right here. And in polars, this is a bit different. We have to use a function name with columns. So we have to write df that with columns, and then we have to indicate the name of the columns we want to sum. In this case, I'm going to select the columns math score and reading score. Okay, I just selected that column separately, and well, this will be the equivalent of this one. So in pandas we do this, but in polars we do this. And now to get or to set a name for this column, what we have to do is add a parenthesis, and then we have to use the alias method. So I write alias, and then we have to write the name of this column. So in this case, I set is gonna be name sum, and with this, we're gonna get a new, uh, a new column for our data frame. So here I run this and you can see that there is a new column named sum and this is the sum of the math score and the reading score. Another thing we can do with polars is filtering data. So let's filter the female gender in our data frame. So if we check out our data frame very fast, we can see that in the gender we have female and male. And if we only want the female gender, what we can do is first select the gender column. So we write PL, that call and then we write that gender column and to filter a specific type of category in a column we have to use that filter function so we write tf that filter and then we open parentheses and i'm going to put this uh pl that call inside the parentheses and here what we have to indicate is that we want that female gender so we write female and with this, we're gonna select only the female gender in the DF data frame. So if I run this, we're gonna see that our gender column only has that female gender. And well, this basically is the equivalent of this uh, pandas syntax. 
And now let's do multiple filtering. So let's say we want to select only the female gender that belong to the group B. So here we have a column race ethnicity and we want to select group B. And well, to do this, we have to do multiple filtering. This is gonna be something like this. Uh, if you are a pandas user, you must be familiar with this syntax. And in polars, it's very similar because we still have to use these notations, this and or or notation, and we have to separate uh, the two conditions with parentheses. So let's do this. First, I'm gonna write the filter again to filter data. And then I'm going to write the two conditions. So the first one is female gender. So I'm gonna copy this because this is my first condition and I'm gonna paste it here. So this is the first, I'm gonna add parentheses and then I'm gonna add the and operator. This is the same operator we have in pandas. And then I'm gonna open parentheses and I'm gonna write the second, uh, the second condition. And in this case, uh, as I mentioned before, it's gonna be race ethnicity, the name of the column, and then group B. So I copy and paste, and then I copy group B. And with this, we have the two conditions and we can filter the data frame based on these two conditions. So we have this data frame that only has the female gender that belong to group B. And that's how you do multiple filtering in polars. Okay, now let's see how to group data in polars. This is very similar to grouping data in pandas. We have to use the group by function. And this is a function that probably you use very often as a data scientist or data analyst. That's one of the most common functions that we use on a daily basis. And well, to group data, we only have to use the group by. And to do this, we have to write df that group by. And in this example, let's group by the column rates ethnicity. And then we're going to count the number of groups that are in this column. So first I'm gonna write group by, well, parentheses, and then the name of the column. And well, as we always do, we have to add an aggregate function. And in this case, I'm gonna add that count because I want to count the elements inside this column. And if I run this, we're gonna see how many groups are in each column. So we have, for example, in group A, we have 89 elements and in group E, we have 140 elements. And as you might have noticed, this is very similar to pandas. Okay, now it's time to see how to join data frames with polars. This is a little bit different than joining data frames with pandas, simply because the name changes. So in pandas, we use the merge function, while in polars, we use the join function. And the rest is basically the same. So for this example, we're gonna use another CSV file. So we have two data frames to join. And in this case, I'm gonna use this language score.csv that is on the description below. So I'm going to read first this data frame. And to do this, we have to use uh, the PL that read CSV as we did before, and then we have to write the name of this data frame. And I'm gonna name this as DF2. So now let's see how to join these two data frames, DF and DF2. So first we have to write uh, the name of the first data frame, in this case DF, and then we have to use the join function. So I write DF, that join, and here we have to write the name of the second data frame, in this case is DF2. And then, uh, we have to add the on parameter and indicate which is the column that these two data frames have in common. So in this case, the column in common is ID. Both data frames have this ID column and that's how we're gonna join these two data frames. So I'm gonna run this and we can see now that in the DF data frame, there is a new column named language score. So this language score column belongs to my DF2. The other columns are the columns from DF. So we join these two data frames based on the ID because those two data frames have the same ID, uh, ID column. And something you need to know is that the parameters we use in the merge function in pandas are similar to the parameters we use in the join function. So I press shift and tab to get this box and you can see here that there is the how parameter. So this is how you want to make the join, inner, outer, and well, there are other options. Then we have left on and right on. And well, that's basically how this join 
function works. It's very similar to the merge function we have in pandas. All right, the last function we're going to learn in this video is the concat function. This concat function allows us to concatenate two data frames. And we also have this concat function in pandas, but the behavior in pullers is a bit different because as you might remember, pullers doesn't work with indexes. So you might see some differences. So let's have a look how this concat function works. So let's concatenate df and df2. And to do this, the syntax is pretty similar to pandas. We have to write pl, then concat, then parentheses, and then open square brackets, and then write that data frame we want to concatenate, in this case, df and df2. So once we have this, we have to indicate how we want to concatenate. In pandas, you have to write the axis parameter and write a one or a zero if you want to concatenate vertically or horizontally. But in pullers, you only have to write uh, the how parameter and then indicate either horizontal or vertical. And horizontal represents a horizontal concatenation that makes a data frame wider, while a vertical concatenation makes a data frame longer. So that's something you have to keep in mind in case you have trouble understanding these concepts. And in this case, I want to make a horizontal concatenation. So I write horizontal. And now I'm going to run this. So if I run this, you're going to see that I'm going to get an error. And this error happens because the two data frames have a column in common. And this column is the ID column. And well, uh, this is the column ID that we had before. And actually this ID column helped us before join these two data frames, DF and DF2. And well, this uh, doesn't help us concatenate these two data frames because these two data frames, again, they cannot have a column in common. So here we see column with name already exists. So the ID column already exists in the two data frames and this cannot happen. So to concatenate, we have to drop uh, this ID column from DF2. And to do this, we have to use the drop function. So I write, for example, DF2 dot drop, and then I have to write the name of the column, in this case, ID. So I write DF2 equal to DF2 dot drop and now everything is working fine. So we can see that we concatenated DF and DF2. And well, again, you cannot have a column in common if you want to concatenate. And well, we see that now we have uh, 1000 rows. That's the 1000 rows that belongs to DF, uh, DF1 or just DF. And well, you can see now that also we have some null data. And this happens because there are 1000 rows in DF, but there are only 100 rows in DF2. So when we concatenate these two data frames, we're going to get like 900 missing data because this data doesn't exist in DF1. And well, that's why we get this null data. This is different from joining data frames because when we join, at least when we do an inner join, uh, we only get the data they have in common, let's say. And well, the output has 100 rows. So that's the difference. So that's how you concatenate data in polars. And as you can see, the behavior is similar to pandas. There are just some differences and you're going to notice those differences when it comes to pandas function that need the index. For example, the concat function need the index and that's why the behavior changes uh, with polars. And that's pretty much it. Let me know in the comment section below what other type of polars tutorial you would like to see. Maybe visualization, data cleaning, or anything you want. And that's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.